I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some of your time with us today to, to, uh, to watch this interview and hopefully you'll learn something. You know, the LDS people come from different backgrounds sometimes and we have a most interesting guest tonight, today, who's, uh, who's going to share her story. She's 91 years old and we appreciate her coming. Her name's Myrna Turkelson. And we appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Thank you. You were actually not born in the church, is that right? Oh, no. Where were you, where were you born and what religion were you in initially? I was born in Ohio and basically my, most of my family are Methodists. Oh, okay. Uh, there's a few Roman Catholics and Lutherans <laughs> and different ones. Yeah. But most of, mostly that we were Methodists. Okay. And I know you told me a little earlier that you, at about 12 years old, you got your hands on a Bible and you started reading that and that meant right. a lot to you at that time, right? I love to read. I always have. So yeah. I've been a very good reader Yeah. and I've read the Bible back and forth so, oh, so wow. many times. Yeah. And so, and I know you also joined the military, but this is back during World War II. Right. Stationed in Washington, D.C., is that right? Right. So tell us I about was, that. I lived in Washington, D.C. I worked there before the war, before the, um, at the start of the war. Okay. I was in D.C. Yeah. And um, um, I lived in Virginia for a while. Mm -hmm. And then I went into the military and I served in New York for a while. And then in New York City. Yeah. And... Um, and this is where a uh, husband comes along, is that right? Then, uh, I went into the big city for a pro uh, little program that we were going to, eight of us girls, and uh, there I met my husband. And he's a Salt Lake boy, is he? And Was he? Uh, a we got acquainted the first day we met, and the next day he asked me to marry him. <laughs> and, uh, Love at first sight, huh? Well, he always said he just knew that the Lord put us together. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I was quite taken back because I didn't know a thing about Mormons. He had told you he was Mormon. He told me he was Mormon, yeah. and I didn't know a single thing about Mormons except what the preachers back east had spoken of. And I thought... And that probably wasn't very flattering, was uh, it? That was most unflattering. Okay. And so um, he, uh, I asked him a couple of questions, and I realized that he didn't really know his religion either. Oh, and, yeah. uh, of course he was young. But it's interesting to find out after I came out here, and I realized a lot of people say they're Mormon, but they don't really know anything about it. I found that's true too. Why they, do you think that is? I don't know. They just are so spoon-fed that they don't really ever read anything. Yeah. They never, my husband never uh, sat down and thought about it. 
But he knew the church was true. He just, but well, he just knew it was true, but not because of because knowledge. Because his grandmother said it was true, and his mother said it was true, so it <laughs> was true has to, to him. Be true. I, I'm afraid I may have fallen into that same category, however. But um, so, how long were you out there in New York with with him? And did you marry out there then? No, uh, not very long after we met. I was transferred. The I was. A, in the medical corps, oh. and so they transferred me to the Bethesda, Maryland Naval Hospital. Oh, yeah, Bethesda. And that's where I served the rest of my time, okay. uh, doing nursing and so forth at, at uh, Bethesda. Yeah. And uh, then we were married in Maryland. Okay. Honeymooned in Ohio and came to Utah. Okay. And that's when the journey begins. And you're still now, you're still not a Mormon at this point. No, I, I tried. I really became a Mormon in the things that I did and the things that, um, and I'm sure that most people would say, yes, I had a testimony of the gospel. Yeah. But I knew it wasn't the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've got a testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ have a, all my life but but not this gospel of Joseph Smith I just is never it? could quite get the gospel of Joseph Smith to fit into that pattern and yet you you did eventually join the church in five within five years five or so five years right? after we were married then I joined the church and about a year and a half later went to the temple now, I think it was interesting you, you were explaining earlier about the missionaries who came to teach you. Well, the missionaries, the first ones were younger, and they didn't know how to answer my questions because I kept asking questions about the Bible and how it fit in with Mormonism. Yeah. And um, finally they sent two older missionaries, <laughs> and they really didn't know any more about it than the younger ones. And um, I guess I just asked questions that they never had encountered anything like that. Yeah, somebody that had actually done some reading and studying. Right. Yeah. And uh, then I did a comparison study on um, Jesus, um, Jesus of Nazareth by Harry Emerson Fosdick. Mm. And... Um, then James E. Talmage wrote uh, one. Jesus the Christ. Jesus yeah. the Christ. And by doing a total comparison of those two and realizing how the people lived in Jesus' day, the different homes and the different kinds of situations that they lived in, yeah. as compared to what Joseph Smith was teaching, <laughs> And Jesus wasn't a brother. No. And so I had quite a time because I never had anybody I could talk to. Um, all of my husband, I have no people here of my own. Yeah. All of my husband's people were Mormons, so. So when you raise these questions, there really weren't probably very good answers for, but, for what uh, you were. It was a beautiful study yeah. on those books. Well, you joined the church, and then within a year or so, or about a year after, you get married in the temple. And then you're a faithful temple recommend holder for, for years oh, and years. Well, we went to the temple every Tuesday night for a mm. long time. And mm. um, very faithful, paid our tithing, did everything just according to yeah. the standard rules. Well, that must have been difficult in some way for you to have this knowledge of Jesus. And you, did you appreciate him as God? And did you understand grace and works at that point? Um, all of my personal private prayers were to Jesus. Um, and it was simply a matter of acknowledging a prayer that my fam any member of the family would say. Yeah. And it it was a very difficult. It must have been situation. It the I have not been happy with the situation. I've always felt like a hypocrite, knowing one thing and trying to live a knowing one thing and trying to live a different way yeah. to please him, 
but I, <clears throat> I don't believe in divorce in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, and you and, were respectful of him, and and I was so uh, respectful of him. Yeah, and I tried to do what he said was right. Yeah. Um, gosh, there's so many things to ask. Are you? Uh, so, did you ever share any of these things with him? Did he? Was he willing to? I tried from time to time, but he didn't want to hear it. No. He simply wouldn't acknowledge any of it. Yeah. And, and so you weren't able to share, and you raised your children in the church, and? Um, I raised the children in the church um, as much as I had to. Yeah. None of them are in the church now. Oh, really? They've all? And uh, there's only, as far as I know, there's only two grandchildren that are in. Oh, that are still active in the church? And uh, the one grandson is just very, very LDS, uh -huh. and the other one is <laughs> kind of in between. Well, what do you think the, the Mormons most misunderstand about Christians? Pardon me? What do Mormons most misunderstand about Christians, do you think? I th personally, I think the Mormons are so spoon-fed the gospel of jo uh, Joseph Smith, they don't even recognize Christ. They don't know who Christ is. And yet they say they believe in Jesus. But they don't. But they don't understand really who he is, do they? You know, it's like on Fast and Testimony Day, they all get up and say basically the same thing. <laughs> and About Joseph Smith and the church and the prophet. Right. And, and, you know. they, and the children sit there and listen to that. Yeah. And... Um, I love teaching, and I used to take jobs teaching in the church, yeah. but um, I society, had to be or? more than careful what I said. <laughs> I bet. Well, now, you used to bear your testimony, though, at uh, church. Yes, I did. Yeah. Again, did you have that feeling of, or did you share Jesus kind of at that time, or did you were you caref um, there, careful with what you said? There were a few times that I... Um, referred to Jesus, and uh, I had one bishop that said, oh, you and your Pentecostal ways. Oh, really? <laughs> and uh, I kind of got a kick out of that. Because a little rebellious I, there or something, huh? Right. He didn't want me to uh, say much about Jesus in front of the people in the ward. Yeah, and I know you've, you've studied, so the Bible's always meant something important to you, hasn't it? Right. Yeah. Did you read the Mormon, the Book of Mormon, and the? I read the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, all four. Yeah. And my husband bought a quad. As a matter of fact, I had two. I had a big one <laughs> at home and a small one I carried in. To church, huh? Did you ever pray about the Book of Mormon? Did you ever feel like it was? I prayed to be shown the truth. Yeah. Because Jesus said, if we know the truth, the truth will make us free. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I tried to follow Jesus. It's, it's been very difficult. Well, you know, it's interesting you say what you did about Jesus and the way the Mormons look at Jesus, but we've had so many people on the show that even though Mormons say they believe in Jesus. Every one of these people we've interviewed say they now believe in a different Jesus. Well, that, uh, the Mormons don't know Jesus like we do. Well, explain that just a little bit. Uh, what do you... The Mormons think of Jesus as just another person, a, a brother. Yeah. They don't... He was just born first, They don't right? <laughs> give him any honor for any being a god. Yeah. They don't believe that he's God. They believe he is a god, but not that he is God. Right. Yeah. And their belief that they can become gods and have marriages in the hereafter and have children and all of these things, I, I, it just isn't in the Bible, so it isn't true. What did you think of that the first time you heard that, that you could become a god? Well, 
It's just like the first time I went to the temple. I thought, where do they come up with this? <laughs> then I thought, no, my uncles are all Masons, and Joseph Smith and Brigham Young were both 32nd degree Masons. Oh, and I thought, uh-huh, so that fits. Yeah, that was a big shock to me. When I went in and looked at masonry in the, in, on the Internet, and I found all the signs and tokens and handshakes and wording well, was all the same as the temple ceremony. See, I went to the temple when they wore the old garments that from, came clear from, down here and yeah, down to the ankles and yeah, tied and down tied the front. Down. And we did all the signs and everything. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, you took your own the, garments the, off and put new ones on, right, right. for the temple. So it it was just unreal. So your your uncles were Masons? Had they ever shared anything? I mean, did you know, what, did they ever say anything about the temple, the Mormon temple? Occasionally, we would discuss it. I've always been the inquisitive one, asking too many questions. Yeah, that sounds like, that's dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> And so you you ask them about some things and mm -hmm. yeah. Oh well, it's it's interesting that you would. I mean, to, it's very respectful of you to have, have felt that way about your husband and s stayed with him um, all those years. How many you were sixty one years? Sixty one years, and yet you knew that there was something wrong with the church. Right. And he wasn't willing to ever look at that with you, I guess, no. and. So you're just not at all stay the dutiful wife and now he's passed away. Yeah. How long ago was that? Pardon me? When did he pass away? In oh six. Oh six. Be yeah. nine years in November. Yeah. So what have you done now in the last nine years or so with with religion and <sighs> mostly just tried to synchronize everything that's been laying <laughs> on the shelf, if you will, yeah. all those years. Have you learned new things r recently? or? But I have been I reading uh, the Bible a lot more. Have you? And uh, I read everything. <laughs> I, I have hundreds of books. Yeah, you, d you said you, you really like to read. Yeah. You've read church books, I guess, over the years. Yeah. And oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I've read uh, most of the um, LDS church books, and uh, I've read all kinds of church books, all of the different denominations. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I went to the University of Utah Library at one time and got a book that uh, it was called The Ten Most Something religions in America, the most prominent mm. religions in America. Yeah. And uh, so I began one by one studying all about them. <laughs> and Mormonism, I guess, was one of those. Right. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting, too, you mentioned hypocrisy, and I know what Jesus said about hypocrites in the Bible. And I think that was one of the things that started bothering me most when I started learning about uh, the book of Abraham and uh, the oh. different versions of the first vision and things that really started troubling me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, I can't, I can't be a hypocrite. I just can't sit here knowing one thing and, and acting like I believe something else. It, it, it became very difficult for me. You've, you found that true too, I guess. And, and if your sweet wife hadn't gone along with you, then you would have been in a situation where you had to make some choices. That would have been very tough. I, I was prepared to do probably most anything, I suppose. I don't know how long that would have lasted, but uh, yeah. yeah, you know Carla. And, and I'm so grateful that she was willing to, to uh, look and start learning and studying and came to the same well, conclusion. Well, you know, most Mormons are not thinkers. They don't think things through. Yeah. They don't take a scripture and really study it or really think it through. Well, that's, it's so and, funny uh, to say that. If I were to 
talk to Mormons today to tell them to change their lives, I would tell them in a heartbeat to get out of the Mormon church and <laughs> And to study a little, huh? To study, think. study the Bible, yeah. so that they know they're saved and that they're going to heaven. Hmm. Well, it's funny. I we've spent in in my Bible, um, in my church that I go to. We've spent about two years in John, and I know the Mormon Church t t uh, studies the New Testament, but every four years or so, and then they go through it in a few months, you know, or I guess right. in 12 months. So it's not a very in-depth study, is it? Right. <laughs> it isn't. No. And usually you don't have a really good teacher because most of the, at least I have found, that most of the Mormon teachers just kind of follow what... Yeah is laid out for them oh, to sure. teach and yeah. and they don't really think about it they don't really get into the heart and soul of what they're teaching well i'm sure there's many different different teachers but i know that there were some that do saturday night study and sunday mornings before their lesson and that's about it they don't do any really in-depth study and like you say it covers chapters at, at a time so so they're not really in-depth study. Well, so you, you say that, um, having m members be critical in their thinking. And, you know, I, I know Lynn Wilder. I don't know if you know her name. Pardon me? Lynn Wilder. Oh, yeah. She was a BYU professor. But she said that uh, people will spend time studying critically uh, things like biology and math and, and history and so on. But when it comes to religion, there's no critical thinking. That's right. Yeah. That is so right. Yeah. It's kind of what you're saying about study. So you've done that your whole life. And uh, what would you, uh, do you, would you do anything differently at this point? I mean, looking back on, on your life and Looking so on, back? Yeah. Would there be anything that I wish I had done differently? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, well, I don't, you don't need to enumerate everything, but... As far as the church is concerned, would you have encouraged your kids to, to go to a Christian church? Well, or? I, I still say that I went to church. I did what I was supposed to do yeah. to honor my husband and, and our marriage. Yeah. And um, Do you think there are other LDS women that have, kind of go, that have gone through or go through what, you're, what you've been through? Far more than you could imagine. Really? Far more. Just being dutiful wives. They you know, women do talk when they get together, and they do exchange sometimes little secrets from their households and so yeah. forth. And there are many, many, many unhappy women in the Mormon church. Wow. And that's without polygamy. <laughs> Right. Can you imagine if that was added to the mix? Like, well, like my some husband, have. some of my husband's people, um, his grandparents and so forth were polygamists, and so I have heard some firsthand stories from some of them, and yeah. um, <laughs> that must have been a terrible, terrible way to live. Yeah. I wish all of the more. Uh, Polygamist women would just walk away from their husbands today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would all the abuse and everything that goes along with with. Well, that. the abuse to the children. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I guess a couple of last-minute questions. Uh, you've been able to share with your children, I guess, how you feel about the Bible and Jesus. Oh yes. And are they have they? been respectful of you or are they okay yes with? they yeah. have been very respectful and uh, as a matter of fact uh, they pretty much all have the same attitude well mama whatever makes you happy yeah well that's good well tell us a little bit about your relationship with Jesus now with Jesus yeah I pray almost constantly I read my scriptures by the hour Mm -hmm. And I read 
um, books such as Days of Praise and little tiny pamphlets and books that are put out by other religions. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm a, a person that compares everything I read, and then I go to the Bible to make sure it's right. And yeah. I wish Mormons would do that more, compare it to the Bible. <laughs> well, actually, if when I read the book of Abraham, I was so disgusted because that's not right. No. <laughs> And uh, there were so many times trying to live up to what my husband wanted me to be yeah. that I felt discouraged and disgusted mm. because I knew it wasn't right. Had you heard that the church got the papyrus back in 1967? Yes. Had you heard that? Yes, you I were heard. You were aware of that? I don't know why. I, I, I was on my mission then, so I don't know if that's why I didn't ever hear about it. But it's just interesting that uh, what that's proven, you know, and, uh, that it has nothing to do with Abraham. So Well, I also watch the news, and I'm very interested in all the other countries. Yeah. what they're doing. I've been watching this thing with Greece and all these sure. wars among the people there in Syria and the different places. Yeah. And I know I'm quite elderly, but um, I also think that the Americans are in for some really hard times. Yeah. Yeah, we're letting things happen, that's for sure. Well, having lived through one depression, when our motto was either make do or do without. Yeah, yeah, we've been a pretty spoiled country for many years. And we've so. been a very spoiled nation. Well, Myrna, our time is up, actually, and so you've only got just a couple of seconds. You, 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 you love Jesus, it sounds like, tremendously, and the Bible means so much to you. You have a wonderful relationship with him and you you trust his grace do you and yeah totally trust Jesus yeah we can't work our way to heaven is that right no <laughs> we can't work our way to heaven thanks Myrna for sharing your story with us and appreciate it you're very welcome good night <laughs>